Hello and welcome back friends. Today we will look at the filter activity in Automation Studio. Filter activity is one of the segmentation uh, techniques uh, that you can use uh, under automation. Um, and before we get into filter activity, um, let's look at like some uh, refresher on uh, what data filters are. So I'm in Email Studio right now. Uh, if you look at under subscribers, there's an option for data filters. Um, so if you're familiar with Email Studio, uh, if you work with you know the lists um, and data extensions, the data model, you should be able to um, segment uh, like data in your lists into groups uh, using a filter and data extensions into filter data extensions using data filters as well. So here I have a few examples uh, that I actually created earlier for data filters. There's one called uh, for the customer with order history uh, and that's actually two data extensions that I have. I have a, a customer data extension and an order history data extension. Uh, and so uh, as you can see by the name itself, like hey, I have all the customer information, the customer DE and uh, any order related information for those customers in that order table. So if I wanted to get a list of customers which have orders uh, in the order history table, then I can use this uh, filter, the data filter that I've created. Uh, so let's go take a look at it. So when I click into it, I should be able to preview this. Let me click on edit. And as you can see on the on the left side, these are the fields in my customer DE, uh, the basic customer demographic information. Uh, and uh, those of you familiar with data relationships, so you can actually set data relationships in Email Studio, which is uh, how you actually relate uh, one or more uh, data extensions. So I have the customer order history, uh, customer to order history data relationship set up here. And the order history table has like three fields. It's like, like customer ID, order date, and order ID. So what I've done is like I've created a filter uh, for the customer DE table saying like give me all the customers uh, and these information returned to me where the order ID is not empty. So what it does is it actually does an inner join like the data relationship does an inner join. It will find out like all the customers uh, who have a order ID in this particular table as well and then return me all these customer information for that. Right? One thing you need to note is like you know when you do filter uh, segmentation. Uh, it does not uh, combine data from both the ta uh, data extensions. It will only bring in the data from the source that you've actually specified. So in this particular case, if you're running the, the filter on the customer D, the target uh, data extension that gets created as part of the filter is going to be uh, having the same structure as the, the source, which is the customer D here. You will not get uh, the fields from uh, this order table in the, in the resulting data extension. For that, we will look at the next activity in, in a future video, which is called the query activity. Okay. So um, this is pretty straightforward, like how you would actually create a data filter. Uh, now let me go back and show you uh, the other filter that we have uh, for lists that we can actually create for groups. So this one is like, as you can see, uh, the customer order history, the type of data extension. So if you see something with profile attributes, it actually means it was created for a list and uh, the resulting uh, uh, structure is the group. Okay? So when you segment a list, you always get a group. So this particular uh, data filter that we created actually looks at a, a NTO customer list and then uh, what it does is actually it looks at the gender and the email opt-in flags and it says if it is male and opt-in is true, then go ahead and filter those people out. Right. So the resulting group that you would have would only have like male NTO customers who have email opted in, right? So that's, that's the output that you would get. So uh, let's see now how you would actually use these two filters in Automation Studio. Um, so we'll go back to Automation Studio here. And as before, uh, we will create activity here. And then you will see this is the one that you will actually use for a filter activity. When you click on filter, it will give you this option to go ahead and, and choose uh, and configure like which data filter do you want to uh, use. So if I use uh, the uh, the one that we use for the list, uh, so automatically if you select it here, it will actually show up uh, the value uh, profile attribute. So this confirms that you know this is actually for a list and not for a data extension. However, if I use uh, the customer with order history, it will automatically change it to a data extension. So that's one way of validating. Um, like you know, if you have similar names, like what um, data structure this data filter is applied on. Okay, 
So first, let's look at like you know using the the list to group one. So I'll just give a dummy name here. So let me put this. Yeah, filter activity for NTO mail email opt-in customers. Uh, leave the others blank. So for list and the the group, uh, you have to like come in and you can actually select the source list here. So I chose uh, NTO customer list, and then uh, under the groups, I had to tell where the location is, and I can give a name like NTO mail uh, email opted in customers. So if I go ahead and then click next, it'll actually show me the summary of okay, this is what it's going to create. Okay. Now, uh, something that you need to know is like it will always create a new group, um, and this is done just one time when you created this filter activity, and then every time like the automation uh, job runs, uh, it will update the same group. Like it will just keep refreshing the same group. It will not create multiple groups every time. Right. So uh, earlier we saw in in, in Email Studio uh, in the data filters, this one has to, like you do it manually, and then if you needed the data to be um, like you know, refreshed into the data extension uh, or the the group, you have to do it manually. So uh, the way uh, that we automate this, like you know, ensuring like you know the the latest data is getting um, uh, extracted into these filter data extension or the group uh, on a periodic basis, that's where you know filter um, activity comes in. Okay. So uh, as you can see here, like you know, if I go ahead and create this, it will create this particular group for me. But we'll not do that. Now we'll just go back and then show you the example of how to do it for a data extension. So the extension, uh, the data extension one, it will, it will like I said earlier, it will, it will show you the data extension here. Let me change this ecom the order history. And if I go ahead here, uh, as you can see, like now the the interface is uh, slightly changed. For data extension, like you know, it will not ask you to like you know select. A source or, or a target, uh, you just have to provide uh, the target name. Okay. Now, if I have an existing data extension that I tried to provide here, it will give you an error. For instance, I have a data extension here uh, that has a similar structure, um, and I had actually run this filter earlier. So, if I try to like you know, reuse that, it will give me an error. It will say like you know you have to use a unique name. So even if I change that. Uh, like uh, with order history, which is not there, uh, but then if I use an external key for that particular uh, data extension, so now you will see, like, you know, it, it will show you that it has to have a unique key as well. So when you give it for the first time, you can leave the external key as blank. You will automatically get filled once the filter activity uh, gets saved. Uh, and then when, whenever it reruns, it will automatically. Um, like you know, get populated, and then you will keep on updating the same data extension. So, filter activity is only uh, is one of the activities where uh, you don't have to create the data extension upfront, uh, even the group as well. Um, it will actually create it for you. Okay, um, so that's the the best part. Like you don't have to like you know, do any pre-configuration, as long as you have the source data either in the list or a data extension, and then specify like you know what the target name is. It will automatically create it for you. So in this particular case, if I go ahead with customers with order history and I go ahead and click next, um, you will automatically take that and the external key, like you said, will be blank. Um, but once it saves and you and you come back, you will see an external key automatically populated. And then uh, you can keep on running this multiple times uh, as part of an automation workflow um, and the data will keep on getting updated to the same data extension. It will not create multiple data extensions. It will just be one data extension. Right? I'll uh, cancel out of here. Uh, because I already have one that I created, and if I want to like use that in the automation workflow, um, I can just pull in like a schedule uh, as a starting source, and then if I go here, let me just open that up. So as you can see from the summary, I've just named it as a filter of customers, and then you can see this is the uh, data filter that we had created that we pulled in, uh, and that is definitely for a data extension, and this is the uh, customer with order history data data extension that I had actually created. For this one uh, through the filter activity and you can, as you can see like you know once it has been created it will automatically populate the external key so that's the uh, summary of the configuration uh, for the filter activity uh, one thing you need to know is like the the filter activity always overwrites uh, the destination right so it will override the data in the group or the the filtered data extension like it's it's not going to like add or update 
So please do keep that in mind, like you know, when you do a filter activity. Let me cancel out of here so that and if I go ahead and run once it will uh, automatically like refresh and, and then it will update uh, the data extension so I'd already run this earlier uh, and you can see like you know this is the data extension that will get populated you can see like you know it's, it's um, taking the, the filter and then filtering it and then updating the data into the data extension so that's a, a high level summary of like, you know, how you would configure a filter activity uh, using uh, data filters that you created in, in email studio. And then you can add that to your workflows. Uh, you probably wouldn't just have only a filter, like you, know, you, you can, uh, but sometimes like you, know, you would combine it with, with multiple um, options. Like uh, one common use case that you can think of is let's say you have um, data that gets imported um, in through an FTP uh, file, and then uh, you, you would actually uh, uh, update your data extensions in marketing cloud and then the next step would be like you know, to do a segmentation so filtering is one way of like you know, segmenting the data that you just received and then you would say you know send out the emails after that so filtering is quite often like whenever you want to like segment a specific set of customers based on filters that you have that you you can easily configure uh, you will go ahead and set up the uh, automation with filter activities uh, only thing that you need to keep in mind is that the, the target data ex extension that you get when you do the filter uh, is always going to be the same data structure as that of the source. So you cannot have additional fields on there. Uh, it doesn't give you the flexibility. So for that, we will need to look at a different type of activity, which is called the query activity, which we will look at in the next video. Okay. So hopefully this was very helpful for you um, and uh, uh, keep subscribing. Uh, I will come back to you soon with the next video on uh, Korea activities. Right? Thank you for watching.